Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So I often have people, both Catholic and not Catholic, uh, friends and people I meet, um, who become friends, because that's how, whatever. People who ask me, um, they say, why do you have to confess your sins to a priest? Like, you Catholics, why do you have to confess your sins to a priest? If someone's Catholic, they say, hey, why do we Catholics have to confess our sins to a priest? Why not go right to God? That's a fantastic question, and that's what we're going to talk about today. When someone says, why confess your sins to a priest? Why not go right to God? I would respond, please, no, first thing, go right to God. Please go right to God. You know that as we're baptized Christians, the Lord Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit gives us like direct access to the Father. Even if you find yourself in serious sin, yes, go right to God and apologize. Like repent of your sins, confess your sins to God. That is, we do that, but we also recognize that we're called to go to the priest. Why? Because the role of the priest. The role of the priest, even in the Old Testament, was a role of intercessor or mediator. Now, Jesus Christ is the one great mediator between God and man, but that's a very, very specific um, uh, title that St. Paul was using that said that he's the one who ultimately makes it possible for us to have full access to the Father. But we mediate on behalf of other, each, each other often. For example, I have a Bible in my hand. I did not make this Bible up and God didn't give it to me directly. It was communicated to me. It was given to me by someone else. So someone else was the mediator, right? That gave me the scripture and someone else taught me the word of God. And so those people were mediators in a similar way. Priests in the Old Testament were mediators between God and men. And in the New Testament, priests serve a similar role, but with even more power. Why? Because in the Old Testament, uh, priests would act as a symbolic mediator between God and man, right? They would intercede on behalf of the people to God and they would take, uh, they'd offer up sacrifices for sins, for the forgiveness of sins, but ultimately they could, those things couldn't take away sins. Jesus Christ himself can take away sins. He even says, your sins are forgiven, you know, go in peace. But it's, it's his sacrifice, Jesus' sacrifice, that makes it possible for us to have our sins forgiven. But then something powerful happens in John chapter 20. Jesus is risen from the dead. He appears to the apostles in the upper room and he breathes on them, John chapter 20, and he says, Receive the Holy Spirit. Those whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Those whose sins you hold bound are held bound. He gives the apostles the ability to forgive sins. Now, this is absolutely powerful. Why? Because not only does it demonstrate that Jesus is instituting a new priesthood, but it also reveals that Jesus desires that priesthood to extend his true and full forgiveness to all those who come in repentance. Because Jesus never gives a gift that he doesn't expect us to use, right? Here's the gift of forgiving sins. Go do that thing. Now, why do we have confession? Well, <laughs> because from the beginnings of the church, there began this, this um, a tendency or a, a practice of confessing your sins to the priest, to the presbyteroi, uh, confessing your sins to the priest and allowing the priest to have a prayer of forgiveness. In fact, James chapter 5 talks about this. It says, Is there anyone sick among you? Let them send for the priest and let the priest pray over them, anointing them with, them with oil in the name of the Lord. If the person is sick, they'll recover. If they have any sins, those sins will be forgiven them. Now, the next line says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. A lot of times, uh, non-Catholic Christians will say, well, yeah, see, it says confess your sins to each other. Confess your sins to one another. So that could be just Christian confessing to Christian. Yeah, I'll give you that point. It could mean that, definitely. But let's look at all the words. What, I just, what was just described? What was just described was send for the elders, the presbyteroi, the priests of the church, that the priests pray over them, and if they have any sins, those sins will be forgiven them. Who did Jesus give the ability to forgive sins to? To the apostles. Okay, so we're talking about their descendants or their, you know, the people who came after them, them. If they have any sins, they'll be forgiven them. Then it says, therefore. And the big Bible joke is, whenever the word therefore is there, you have to ask one question. What is it there for? <laughs> it, it says, therefore, confess your sins to one another. That just gets done take, talking about the priest forgiving sins and then says, therefore, confess your sins. That's really important because it's the actual biblical link between confession and forgiveness. Quick clarification. Is, am I saying like, well, priests have the power to forgive sins? Well, yes, they have the authority to forgive sins, but they don't themselves, and like, I don't, as of myself, as like Mike, I don't have the ability to forgive sins. But Jesus has desired to forgive sins through me. I remember hearing a, a, a conversation between a priest and a, and a Baptist pastor, and, and the Baptist pastor was challenging the priest on, like, how can you claim to forgive sins? Um, only God can forgive sins. 
And the priest said, well, of, of course, God is the one who forgives sins. But he asked the Baptist pastor, he said, but you know, do you have any gifts of the Holy Spirit? And the pastor said, yeah, I have the gift of healing. So, so the Lord has healed, you, 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 he said, you've healed people. And he said, well, no, the, the Lord has used me to give his healing to people. Yeah, he's, he's used me as his, as his servant, as his, as his tool. And the priest said, exactly. That's what confession is. And the, the, to his credit, the Baptist pastor said, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Just like the Lord does want to mediate his forgiveness, or his, sorry, his healing, or his miracles, his wonders, his preaching, through the preaching of us Christians, he also desires to mediate his forgiveness through the ministry of the priests. Let's come back to the original question. Why can't I go right to God? Again, of course you can. But one of the things that Jesus gives is he gives us a gift. The apostles, you have the ability to forgive sins. Those who sins you forgive are forgiven. Those who sins you hold bound are held bound. My guess is he does not want us to not use his gift. But he wants us to use the gift. And he gives it to us for a reason. Not only to reconcile us to God, but also to reconcile us to the community. That's one of the things that sin does. It divides us from God, it also divides us from the community. So we need to be received back into the community. Just like when Jesus heals the leper and he says, go show yourself to the priest and offer for your sacrifice, your cleansing, what Moses prescribed. That'll be enough for them. Why? Because the priests receive you back into the community after you've been outside the community. Here's what I find really interesting about confession. In no denomination, throughout the entire world, throughout the history of the world, was it ever claimed that you could baptize yourself? And no, one, and no one does that. No one, no one baptizes themselves into Christ. No one baptizes themselves into the community. You always are received into the community. Always someone else baptizes you. But when it comes to confession, everyone's like, no, 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 no. I go right to God. I don't, have to, I don't have to go through someone else. Yet when it came to baptism, you went through someone else. Here's, I think we're going to get really honest. I think here's where the, where the rubber hits the road. In baptism, it doesn't, I don't have to confess any sins. I don't have to say anything. And so, yeah, go ahead. You give me baptism. But in confession, I have to admit my fault. I have to say things that maybe are embarrassing. And so, no, 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 no. In that case, I go right to God. I think it's time to be a little, really a little bit more honest with ourselves and realize that Jesus, in the scripture, gives the priests the ability to forgive sins. I just might not like that because I don't want to have to confess my sins, right? And yet we know this. We know, we know. That confession is not a place for embarrassment. Confession is not a place for shame. Confession is not a place to, to get beaten up. I always say this and I'll say it again. Confession is not a place of defeat. Confession is where you have been. I've been defeated by sin, but Jesus Christ gets to have victory in my life. Confession is a place of victory where you get to say, Lord God, this is where I've been. This is what I've done. Please have mercy on me. And you get to hear those amazing, amazing words. I absolve you of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Like how powerful is that? You know the Lord God through that ministry of the priesthood that he gave us as his gift has forgiven your sins and made you new. So if you need to go to confession, please, I just invite you. Um, don't hold back. Go right to God right now, but then go to confession as soon as you can because it takes both. For all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, comment, whatever, and go to confession. That's what we do around here. Okay? Thanks.